So at Vela, what we're doing is we're working on electric hydrofoiling boats and ships. We are selling systems to 500 boat builders who are going to do different models of boats that all have Velo hydrofoil system on them. We can improve the energy efficiency of a boat by 15 times. And I don't think anybody's doing it quite the same way. Okay, let's try it out. For this episode of S3, we drove from our studio in San Francisco to visit a company nestled within a ship repair hub in Alameda. Just being there, you could feel the spirit of building things that move and float. But this watercraft doesn't just float, it flies. Hydrofoiling has been around since the early 1900s, but it hasn't gone mainstream due to challenges in manufacturing and material science. But now, companies like Velo are aiming to change that. Well, here we are in our main office and workshop where we're building the first batch of the Velo Hyperfoils. I'm Ed Carney. I'm the founder and CEO of Velo. We make electric hydrofoil boats and systems for other boat builders so everyone can have an electric flying zero emissions hydrofoil boat. I'm Rio Baird. I'm the CTO at Velo. I uh, basically lead the uh, development of the Velo Hyperfoil and the Velo uh, foil system that we're uh, currently uh, uh, bring to market. So when I was about 12 years old, my dad showed me this video of Hydrofoil boat that some MIT students made. And it was like a rowing boat they retrofitted. It popped up out of the water and it started hydrofoiling. And it went really fast and it broke a speed record for human powered boat. And I was just like, holy shit, this is amazing. Every boat should be like this, right? And I just kind of kept thinking to myself, why aren't all boats foiling like this? This is how, this is the future. Fast forward a few more years, done a couple of startups, moved out here to California, and then realized, okay, well, this is a place to make it happen. Decided, like, let's draw some concept designs, get some money together, and give it a go. Applied to YC, got in, and then just been building foiling stuff ever since. I got into boating at a pretty young age. I've always been into boats. I've personally owned about 35 boats at this point. Um, currently have a boat here on the Bay Area I spent a lot of time on. Came down to the States for college, uh, studied aerospace engineering, computer science, electrical engineering at MIT. And I suppose when you... Uh, kind of combine a passion for boats with uh, aerospace engineering, you get flying boats. So I guess that explains uh, why hydrofoil boats. 70% of the, of the world is covered in water. And uh, I think like a little over half of Americans live in a coastal county. There's water everywhere through our cities and in between our like land masses and stuff like that. So what we see is like, we've got a way to create a step change in the like energy consumption, cost, noise, comfort, across all these vectors of what a boat can now do. We see it as like a transport revolution, just like the railroad, the car, and like, you know, planes and stuff. Yeah, what I like about Velo and the way we're doing things here, I think as I mentioned, we're doing two things. We're doing the personal watercraft, which is kind of our first product, beachhead product, and then we're doing the hydrofoil systems. So the great thing about the personal watercraft is um, it's small, um, and it's a highly uh, concentrated market in, in the marine industry. So it's a great market for us to enter in where we can perfect the technology. It's really the most pure version of a hydrofoil vessel in the sense that there's not a lot of accessories, not a lot of interior things to worry about. It is just about the performance of the craft and it fairly, really the focus is on technology. Now when we get into that large fragmented space, we're not building 500 different models of boats. We are selling systems to 500 boat builders who are going to do different bottles of boats that all have Velo hydrofoil system on them. And I don't think anybody's doing it quite the same way. It's hard to live your life as a human if you can't move easily from place to place. This is a very important part of what it is to be alive in this society. I think that's the kind of core of mobility. And if you can enable that and make that more flexible, this is like huge freedom that also comes from being able to move and explore, experience and use the water almost like you're just walking around on, on land. Yeah, so the Velo Hyperfoil um, is, like we said, a, uh, it's a hydrofoil vessel. Um, now, if we go a little more in depth or a little more technical on it, it is specifically an active control hydrofoil system with fully submerged foils. So what makes this vessel unique as compared to, say, a foiling board? Those require a lot of skill and balance. 
because it is up to you as a human to balance it. Uh, so when I say active control, the difference with our product is there is a computer on board, a flight computer. It's making calculations 100 times a second and it is stabilizing the craft for you using control surfaces just like you find on an airplane. So it has ailerons and an elevator just like an airplane. Now when I say it is a fully submerged foil, we can compare that to certain foiling products that have surface piercing foils. So this is a way to stabilize a foil without a computer and that's been done a lot in the past. So hydrofoils have been around for about 100 years, um, but a lot of the older ones, or most of the older ones, are, are passive. So they don't require a computer to stabilize, but there is a large performance penalty to that. So with the active system combined with the submerged foils, we get maximum efficiency, we get uh, best sea keeping ability, um, and with the technology today of embedded computers and low-cost sensors, we're able to actually execute that and put that in a consumer product. So a little bit about the uh, control system. It's actually very similar to aircraft uh, autopilot control. So, you know, it is, uh, it's basically controlling pitch, roll, and yaw, um, three axis stabilization, well, four axes actually, also altitude. The particular things that make hydrofoil control much more challenging than aircraft control is you are operating very near a boundary layer. So you're right on the surface of the water. You get some interesting secondary effects you also have very small margin of error. So um, it, the craft is highly unstable. The, the CG is above the wings a significant amount. And your, your envelope of altitude control is very small. If we go up, if we drift up two feet, the foil's out of the water. So, you know, just that precision is, is challenging. And, and, and dialing in that precision um, and dealing with all those second order effects while maintaining very precise altitude control and attitude control with a highly unstable craft is a challenge. And I can't reveal too many of the exact tricks, but I can, I can tell you it's a kind of a long journey of, of characterizing what matters and, uh, and, and, and handling those. So generally speaking, the way that most boats work is they use buoyancy and then some planing forces to stop themselves from just sinking. But when you get up to speed, that hull just pushes through the water like crazy. And all that energy is just dissipated in moving water. With a hydrofoil, what you do is you use the same principles of aerodynamic lift, except in water, it lifts the hull out of the water and then you just slice through effortlessly with way less drag. You also have the added benefits of flying above all the waves and the chop, you just go straight through it. It's electric, so it's like dead quiet. So as you can hear, there's not some giant engine running. Um, and it's also super smooth. So great for like seasickness and things like that. So the physics of, of like boats and ships, if you want a ship that has a decent fuel economy and is stable and smooth, it has to be big. The bigger the ship, the less drag it makes per ton it can carry. If you use a foil technology, now it's a flying vehicle, you're creating the lift, that tendency to go bigger goes out the window. Now you can deliver the same improved fuel economy, in fact, better than these big long ships, um, and the smooth ride, all with way smaller vehicles. So that's the kind of world that foils will bring to boats. You no longer need to be these big massive ships, I and mean, you can now deliver a much more flexible network of vehicles doing what you want. So whilst we were previously looking at making big vessels, the realization we got is like, what will the future look like when you can do all this stuff with much smaller stuff, you know, do much more point to point routing and deliver what people want in a much more agile way. The sky's the limit, you know, uh, moving people, moving goods, all kinds of stuff. It's pretty exciting. What we've got here is the first build of the aft power unit foil assembly, retraction system, pretty much everything. This is the mock-up of the completed vehicle. And on the back, we've got motor, aft strut, gearbox, propeller, main wing, flaps, and then the flap actuators live inside this. This whole thing tilts up and down to get the foil out of the way, you know, mimicking how a lot of outboard engines tilt up, tried and tested way, very reliable, very strong. Um, and this is a kind of the engine room of the vehicle. What we've got here is, this is our alpha prototype. This is what we built about a year and a half ago. We smashed it together in about six months, designed to test all the massive assumptions you have about making two-person flying electric. Okay, let's try it out. Woo! <laughs> well, that's quite amazing. Whoa! So the cool thing about a hydrofoil, when installed on a boat, is it can improve the energy efficiency by about 15 times. 
So normally boats only are used for like recreational stuff because it's so expensive, like one mile to the gallon. Slap a foiling electric system on it. Now you're like 15 times less cost. So it really opens up the possibilities for all kinds of cool stuff to do on the water. Mobility, recreation, you know, you name it. So that's what we're doing here at Velo. Oh my God, it was amazing. I like had to take it a few times before I fully was like, okay, I'll let it fly. But it's like, once you're at the top of it, it's truly amazing. So what we're working on at the moment is we've, you know, taken all the lessons and engineering learnings from the alpha prototype, slapped it together in six months super quickly, figure out what's important in making a foiling two-person person watercraft, which pretty much no one has ever really done before. Then we went back and sat in the office and sat at the computers for about 18 months and just designed the shit out of it. All of those parts are just starting to arrive. And in, you know, a couple of months from now, we will have the world's first, you know, Velo hyperfoil. So it'll have three times the power, about half the drag compared to the alpha prototype. And everything we put into this is designed to be sold to a customer. So all the systems, all the products, all the suppliers are all like, you know, production kind of style things. So when it comes to lessons learned or, or things we wanted to validate and prove with our early alpha prototype, it's a complex system. It's a vehicle with a lot of moving parts. You have a lot of actuators, a lot of sensors. A lot of it is just validating the performance of specific devices on board and proving to ourselves that those things are going to perform, they're gonna last, they're gonna be reliable. And so just getting hours repetition, time on the water um, to, to prove out the various components. And there are certain systems and components on that boat that work great. And I say we're happy with those. Those you know last a thousand hours out in the field. And there's other ones where, you know what? We're going to need to go with a different supplier. We're going to need to rethink that one because it's not quite living up to the spec sheet or, you know, it's just something uh, off about it. So, so that's really the biggest category of, of learnings, I would say, from the, the early alpha prototype is uh, honing in on what is the ideal system. What are the pieces that are going to be reliable in the long run? So that brings us to where we are today, where the first product we're planning to launch is a two-person electric personal watercraft. And the boat bills are facing a challenge where they're like, Everyone's going to be forced to go zero emissions at some point. It's really hard for them to make a zero emissions boat without someone selling the tech. So that's the sort of second thing we want to do. We want to sell them the outboard engine in the future. So that's kind of like a year from now. Then looking out two, three years from that, it's just a matter of making the same thing, but bigger. So our first system can go on a 14 foot rigid inflatable boat. Then we put two of them side by side and then you can have like an 18 foot boat. Then we upscale the power, the two x of power. You have two of those, you can now do a 30 foot boat. Double it again, you can do now a 45 foot boat. And then we move into the more industrial applications, um, which is super exciting. So with maybe six, seven, eight, nine years down the track, we'll have people wanting to build like small passenger ferries and they'll come to us to use uh, our high default technology. And then next 10, 20 years, it's hard to see how the majority of small medium boats on the water aren't going to be using this kind of technology. This is just far superior in pretty much every every way. For me, the, the impact I'd like to see Velo have kind of on the, the world and marine in general is I'd love to see a world where we utilize our waterways. I mean, you look out in the San Francisco Bay, bridge is packed, water's empty. I, I would love to see that come back and, and have a, a mode of, of water transit that is cost competitive and efficient to other options. And, and with hydrofoils, we can do that. On next week's episode of S3, we're taking flight, going places few have gone before, filming a monumental evolution for next week's featured company. Velo has big plans to continue increasing the size of their flying vehicles year over year. And at S3, we plan to be there to tell that story. To support our continued filmmaking of the innovators of our time and to become part of the action, we've created a limited piece inspired by the flight of hydrofoiling. As always, it's only available until our next episode comes out. So until next week, keep on building the future.